Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm back to talking about old TV shows again, mostly because people like it. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who remember old TV shows, but I'm going to throw a twist on this one. Now we've all seen remakes of old TV shows and reboots and reimaginings and retconning and all sorts of things like that to do with old TV. Occasionally it works, but for the most part it doesn't. Nostalgia isn't what it used to be. Having said that, and having seen a number of bad examples of it, I think there are some TV shows that could really use a reboot and a retcon. And I'm going to throw five of them at you and just see what you think. I'm going to describe the TV show as it was, and the things I would like to change and update for the third decade of the 21st century. It's going to be a little bit of fun. It's going to be a little bit of a thought experiment. So grab your pens, sit back, and we'll get started. I'm going to get this bit out of the way at the start. If you enjoy the video, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment, and hitting the notification bell. You can also support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash paleocinema. On with the show. Route 66 was an interesting TV show. It starred Martin Milner and George Shakiris. It was from the early 60s and it was about two young guys who just travel around America in a Corvette. That's the basis of the whole thing, but it's a lot deeper than that because what they do is they visit different subcultures around the country. Portuguese fishermen, they did one on people working, building skyscrapers in New York who were uh, First Nations Americans. They just went around America, filmed on location and did 116 episodes between 1960 and 1964 just having two guys go around and work odd jobs and, and work hard jobs and just meet people and understand their lives and it really was an interesting series it was almost an anthology series and in some episodes the two leads Maharas and uh, Martin Milner weren't even the focus of the episode the actors who came in to do the character parts were there were some really fine actors who did bits in this one Dan Durie did some did a really good episode just actors who had been in films in the 30s, 40s and 50s suddenly found themselves out of work when the studio system ended. But they did some of their best later work in episodes of Route 66. It really was a seminal series. And I think it may well have been an influence in its own way on something like Easy Rider with two men crossing America to try to find America. It very much had that kind of vibe pre-hippie. So I think it would be a great series to do now because... From what I understand, looking around, America's going through some rough times now, and it might be a good time to do a series of just two guys in a car traveling around America in an anthology style series and looking at what's happening there. I think it'd be important to either have a Latinx or a person of color as one of the people. Things It doesn't have to be a long series either. It can be an anthology series of eight or nine episodes on a streaming service, but a reboot of Route 66 could possibly work in this day and age and I think that if they get the writers correct they get the right showrunner they get the directors and they get two leads that can really inhabit the characters I think it would really work well as an updated series and a way of exploring who people are now you could even do it in Australia you could do um, an Australian version of it and have people explore different parts of Australia it's a very mutable concept it might be one that would really work well. And the lovely thing is you've got more flexibility now. You don't have to do 26 episodes a season. You don't even have to make the episodes any particular length with a streaming service. You can let the story have a natural length in each episode. And I really like that as an idea. Having said that, watching the old series, when you can find the episodes, and there are a few of them on YouTube, it really does show some fine writing and some fine acting in it. And it feels, in some ways, very different from anything that was being produced at the time. And I like that. I like outliers when it comes to the stuff I watch. And I like people who take a chance and do some interesting work. If you're like me, and I pity you if you are, you liked Hanna-Barbera action cartoon series from the 1960s. There were a whole bunch of them and they were all fun. They were all dynamic. They had some great music. The animation was pretty good and the voice acting was on point as well. I think you should do a reboot of those old Hanna-Barbera cartoons from the 1960s. 
Now they've already got a, a roadmap for it and a blueprint because in 2016 and 2017 DC Comics put out a series called Future Quest where all of the heroes from 90% of the old Hanna-Barbera action series from the 1960s were in the one universe and they kind of blended all the stories together. So you got, let's see, Johnny Quest, you got Space Ghost, Dino Boy, Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles, Birdman, the Mighty Mitor, the Galaxy Trio and my very favourite, the Herculoids, all together in one series. And I think that given that DC has a really strong relationship in the animation space with Warner Brothers, putting together a Future Quest um, cartoon series would be really cool to do. I think that the particular style of animation that we had in the 1960s could be replicated quite easily. Well, not quite easily, but quite well. I think it'd be a great way of bringing the intellectual property back. DC and Warner Brothers have already done really well with the um, DC animated universe with Superman, Batman, Justice League, all those kind of guys. Harley Quinn's been in there. There have been any number of them. And I really think that this one could work well if they handle correctly. And if you haven't read the Future Quest comics, I recommend that if you're a fan of the old school cartoons, that you give it a go. It's a lot of fun. They also did some really interesting things. They did a version of Snagglepuss, which was fantastic. I'm not going to spoil that one for you. But if you look at the DC comic they recently did starring Snagglepuss. It's a game changer for that particular character and for the way of telling stories based on these old cartoons. It really is something entirely new and something entirely different and it's a much better piece of work than anything that's come before and it really is a superb graphic novel. So I'd like to see that. I, I like the idea of that. I think that uh, if you can get similar kinds of music, the Hoyt curtain music from the 1960s animated series were pretty good I think it'll work really well and you could also have fairly well-known actors as the voice actors for the various characters which wouldn't be a bad thing either they come here for a day they do the stuff they go home people give them money so a uh, future quest TV series would be really cool to have they probably won't do it because the people who watched those cartoons in the 1960s are starting to die out so it may have passed its use by date but Again, you never know what's going to come back and you never know what's going to be successful. And a lot of it is in the way that it's done. So I'd like to see all of those cartoons come back as an animated series. The next one was a movie in 1961, then a TV series from 1964 to 1968 with a whopping 110 episodes and it is Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Yes, I know they did Sequest DSV in the 1990s and that kind of updated the, the idea of a submarine patrolling the oceans and meeting monsters and doing all sorts of groovy stuff like that. But I think the original premise is still valid now. I'm not a big fan of Erwin Allen. I think that he took really cool ideas and, to be honest, kind of pissed them down the sink. I think that uh, the recent retcon by Netflix of Lost in Space shows how good the concept was for Lost in Space. But Erwin Allen really didn't know how to tell a story well. But I think Voice to the Bottom of the Sea has got a pretty good premise. Uh, a big submarine called the Sea View is out and around the oceans getting rid of various perils. They've got a flying mini sub. They've got the potential to do a whole bunch of really cool science fiction concepts. And rather than doing the kind of monster or menace of the week in an episodic format the way they did in the 1960s with not too much reference to previous episodes in each new episode, I think that having a season-wide story arc might work better. But I like the look of it, I like the grooviness of it, and I think it's got a lot of potential to kind of look at maybe slightly futuristic problems in the world, including global warming and ice caps melting and things like that. There's some real meat on the bone on that one. And with the special effects we can do now, you could really make it work well as a series and maybe you know, get an environmental message out there as well, which is not a bad thing. Slip the message in while people are distracted by the pretty special effects. So a Voice at the Bottom of the Sea series would be fine. The original series had, of course, Richard Basehart and David Hedison 
and a bunch of other people in there and they're all kind of forgettable the movie was more interesting in some ways it had some interesting characters in it though it had a very dumb concept of the sky catching fire but it had some really good actors in it it had Walter Pigeon in there they had Peter Laurie, Michael Ansara, Joan Fontaine so yeah they um they had some interesting Barbara Eden was in there as well so the movie had a better cast but the TV series had some better ideas. They even had a couple of episodes, I think, written by Harlan Ellison, who disliked what they did with them so much, he took his name off the credits. But I think that A Voice at the Bottom of the Sea series would work, and it'd be a bit of fun to do, even if it was only for, like, one season of eight episodes. I'd be happy with that. Next up's one from the UK, which I liked a lot when it came out. It came out in 1968, 1969, had 30 episodes, and it was very popular here in Australia. I'm not sure whether it got to American markets, but I know the UK had it in weird sequence because it wasn't shown at the same time in different parts of the country because colour TV was just coming in, and so they kind of staggered it a little bit and never really found its place in uh, the ratings. But it's the Champions, an ITV series, uh, produced by Monty Berman and the concept's a little bit wild and weird and a little bit superhero-y in its own way. Three agents of a UN intelligence agency called Nemesis crash a plane in Tibet and are found by a, an advanced civilization in the mountains of Tibet. They're healed and they're given some extraordinary powers. They're telepathic between each other, they've got slight precognition, their senses are enhanced, they're physically um, stronger than human. Think around Captain America level. And it's kind of groovy. They had three good-looking actors in it. Uh, William Gaunt, uh, Stuart Damon, and Alexandra Bastido. And we could kind of work with that as well. I like the idea of having three secret agents who secretly have superpowers going around and defeating bad guys. Again, you could have a season-long arc. Uh, there are other series that have kind of borrowed some of the ideas from it. Sensei, the one that uh, J. Michael Straczynski did a couple of years ago, borrowed some of the concepts from the champions. But I like the idea of doing it. In fact, I'm not the only person who did. About a decade ago, Guillermo del Toro was thinking of doing a champions movie, but that never came about for various reasons. So with del Toro giving it a tick of approval, I think that a TV series of the champions would be fun. If they can update the theme tune, which is really cool and groovy, and update the style, or even set it in the 1960s, there's nothing to say they couldn't make it a period piece. I think it'd be a lot of fun to play with, and might be an idea that worked in the same way that the much beloved Man From U.N.C.L.E. movie that uh, Guy Ritchie made about a decade ago worked. Finally, we've got one of my all-time favourite TV series. Let's look at the stats. 1968 to 1970, 66 episodes. A lot of fun, a lot of really fine guest actors in there. If you look through the IMDb on this one, there are some really top actors doing guest spots in this series. It's about a thief who's recruited by the American government to steal from bad guys. And it's called It Takes a Thief. It starred Robert Wagner and Malachi Throne. And from the second series onwards, the master thief Alexander Mundy's father, Alistair Mundy, was played by Fred Astaire. It's filmed all over Europe and other places. It's got kind of that international feel about it. It's very 60s groovy, you know, guys with cravats, beautiful women with beehive hairdos, a whole lot. It has a really good theme tune by Lalo Schifrin and it just has that kind of vibe about it. I'd like to see a, an updated version of It Takes a Thief. I know there was a reality TV show of that name about a decade ago, but this series works for me. In fact, I've got the box set now. People, We know that Robert Wagner's a bit problematic because people think that he killed Natalie Wood. I don't know enough to know whether he did or not. It really is one of those ones where I'm a bit on the fence about, which is unusual for me because I don't usually sit on the fence when it comes to celebrity conflicts. But I like the idea of It Takes a Thief, where you get a suave jewel thief to work for the good guys. Now, whether the American government in this day and age can still be considered the good guys or not is a bit of a moot point. But I think that the concept can work, and allowing for the restrictions of COVID and all that other stuff 
going away at some stage in the future. I think a globe-trotting spy series with a master thief who's got some really good social engineering skills, amongst other things, would be a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I could see the one working, uh, though it may, it may need to be tweaked somewhat for this century and for the updates in security procedures and things like that. It can have a little bit of an Ocean's Eleven vibe about it, which would be kind of cool. And uh, that kind of style and that kind of editing and that kind of slickness would make it a really cool thing to watch. So there are my five ideas for TV series that should be retconned and should be rebooted and remade and reimagined and all the other buzzwords that people use when they're taking a previously owned intellectual property and running with it. I want to see all of those series. I want to see the new stuff as well. I mean, having said that I like these five series and I want to see them rebooted, I think bringing in new ideas and new concepts and new eyes to certain genres of television is incredibly important as well. But, you know, throw me a bone and give me a little bit of nostalgia. So thank you very much for watching. As always, please look after yourselves. Wear the mask over your nose. Follow the science. Get the jab if you can. We can't get the jab here until March, April at the earliest. But I've already got friends overseas that have had needles stuck in them with, with the vaccine in it. And uh, I'm glad that they have. Uh, every time I see a friend on social media who's got the jab, I kind of breathe a slight sigh of relief. So anyway, look after yourselves. Watch some good TV. Watch some bad TV. Watch some old TV and some new TV. Don't just live in nostalgia. Embrace the new as well. And I'll catch you next time.